In today's video, we are going to be working on this kitchen photo. This is a photo that I took in a shoot recently. It is a fairly complicated photo just because we've got a lot of bright light coming in from these windows. We have a little plant here that is gonna be some pretty intricate details and can give you a little bit of a tricky situation. Another thing we've got going on is we have green coming in here from the grass that is outside being reflected on and we have a lot of different color casts happening and i want to take you guys through the entire process to show you how i would do this if i was using lightroom infuse now i want to do set expectations here that i do use an editor i have two editors that i use and if we want to talk about how i found them how i use them how i keep things consistent and kind of just a little more talk about editors we can. I know that it's a touchy subject for some people just because some people can't stand editors because it gives that really generic kind of look. Other people absolutely love editors and think, why would you never use them? I kind of use a hybrid model where I send the complicated photos to them. Generally, most of the interiors I send to them uh, other than like empty basements or powder rooms sometimes or uh, like laundry rooms and stuff like that just because if I'm going to be having an editor do all of my or edit my photos I would like them to be doing the most complicated time-consuming ones and I will do like exteriors drones and a lot of the like unfinished areas and just really easier photos because that way I'm not spending a ton of money doing it I am fairly competent at matching photo styles I have had to do it over the years for a lot of different things where when I was in advertising I would have you know somebody who shot a photo across the country and then they are asking me that I need you know to replicate it or to shoot a style that is is similar to it or edit it in a similar way so I've gotten pretty good at it over the years it is not something that I would recommend if you're not very comfortable with editing um, but we can talk about editors later uh, but for today if I was going to edit this photo we are going to go through it in a flambient way so we have got five photos here so we've got our five brackets I have applied my pre-infusion to it. Um, I've also changed the resolution, so I hope you guys can see it a little bit better. I do apologize for that. I run uh, 4K wide, ultra wide, in like a 12-5 aspect ratio, and unfortunately, not everybody has that, and uh, it's not a um, great uh, way to delineate the information I'm giving you because everything's a little too small. So we are in HD today. We are in a 16.9, so I hope it's a little bit easier for everybody. Uh, but that preset simply just gives me a white balance. Typically it's automatic. This one I have gone in and I have changed that white balance because if we go into auto, you'll see it's a little bit too warm. And I tend to like to give, um, infuse the most neutral, blank slate that I can and then I will dictate the color as opposed to trying to correct it out of the infused file and I know that you can lean on flan on like a flambient the flash frame to do some color correction I do not like the super flashy flambient looking photos I really like natural I am not somebody who likes the super stark contrasty windows I really like things to have less saturation and be a little more architectural magazine style but th there is a style for everybody and so this is probably uh, going this is gonna be tailored in, in how I like it if you like it there are things that we can talk about you could do to potentially make it more your style but this is just how I do it um, so I again I went and I just did a custom white balance and I just kind of messed with the sliders until I got it to where I feel like it's at. You can tell we've got some problems, like I said earlier, with some color casting, which we'll fix in Photoshop. Um, I then took that and I just synced it across all of these so that white balance uh, stays consistent and maintains it across. And then you can see we have our flash frame here. So let's go ahead and get that infusion going. Go to our plugins, blend using Lightroom and Infuse. Same settings as always. I don't have auto align on. I was doing some auto aligns earlier for, uh, I shot handheld at like a community center or a clubhouse of this area. And I did not have the ability to come in with a flash and just take really good photos. It was like, we gotta go in, get it and get out. So I was doing the, um, the automatically align. It is a lot more time intensive, but it does a great job. These are the settings we're using. Same as always, one on the exposure weight, 0.55 on the saturation, and a 0 0.10 on the contrast weight. And we will hit infuse. So we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things we can do here. So 
On this guy, this is going to be our flash as soon as it loads up. There we go. This... I... A lot of people in, in, in Flambient, there are so many different ways to do it. And mine is going to be, again, probably another way because I have found that a lot of the online advice for Flambient photography comes from or not comes from but like they try to really give you show you really easy examples and i am all about giving you real world use cases because i found in my in practice that like yeah if you've got a perfectly like neutral gray or white room with nothing in the way of the windows and it is you know the perfect day for it yes you can do a flash pop on the right, a flash pop on the left, or go crazy. But the problem with that is, is that like the back end editing takes a lot of time. And a lot of these guys are just going through beforehand, like I have. I went through and edited this photo first just to make sure that like, we're not gonna run into any problems because it doesn't make for good YouTube video. Uh, but like they're going through and they're setting up actions so that that specific photo goes smoothly for them. And I'm, I have an action. I'm going to show you that action that I use, but, and we can talk about how to set those up in another video, but it's something that this is where I think editors come in handy. And you'll notice our infusion is done. Um, but the final thought is this is where I think editors come in handy. And I think you need to look at your pricing structure. You need to look at how you can bring them in because for a long time I was very anti-editor. I was like, I can do everything myself, blah, blah, blah. But then when the competition comes in and that standard gets lowered, people get fixated on certain things. And homeowners, realtors, they don't really care about the minute differences that us, as if you're a photographer and if you're a creative and you are a perfectionist like me, they just don't care about that stuff. There are certain things that they care about and certain things that they like, and you have to decide if you're gonna do that for your business or not. And so this is where I think that like, yes, I can teach you all this stuff and I really think it's good to know this because you're gonna have problems. Nothing is perfect. I My editors will send me something sometimes and there is something I don't like about it. And I can either take you know the 24 hours it would take to get it back to them because they are Vietnamese and get some changes back or the few, even if it's a few hours, but that delays the client. Whereas if you know how to fix it, if you know how to get it to where you want it to be, it, it makes it so much easier. So this is why I think being a well-rounded photographer and a well-rounded editor really helps because if you have a certain problem with it, you're not sitting there being like, well, I gotta now have to tell the client and now I have to send it back. And so this is, this is why I think editing is a good thing to know how to do and to practice and to be good at. So let's get into it. This is our infused image. It is extraordinarily flat. Uh, just like I like. You can see we've got tons of stuff. It came in and pulled a lot of beautiful, beautiful depth into it and really, really pulled a lot out of it because this is what we fed it and then this is what it produced. And it looks really, really good. It's really flat. So the only thing I generally do here is go to my tone curve and go down and choose a strong contrast. And that's it. I will edit the rest of this in Photoshop. So we will grab this and our flash frame, right click it. We will go to edit in smart object layers in Photoshop. We're gonna let that guy open. And again, being able to do this and understand the different things that we're gonna be doing in here is why it is so important to be a strong editor. Because if you get these things back and you're like, oh, I just, oh, I don't know, this is where you have problems and that anxiety comes in. And it's like, that's where people don't like using editors is because it, I mean, I pay a decent amount for my editors and I, I like to pay for good ones. I did not find the cheapest thing possible. I shopped around. I really, really worked with them and I paid attention to, do they listen to me? Do they, um, did they want to look at my style? Did they want to figure out what my style is or did they just, you know, ship it off to the cheapest person possible, which is why I don't like Box Brownie and I don't like a lot of these other ones like Fixer and all this other stuff is because they're a middleman. They are a company. They'll say that they're American based or whatever. And they're just a middleman. That's all they are. They go and they say, okay, there are all these editors overseas who are looking to do this work because this work is very, is, is good for them. Um, I'm not going to pretend to know exactly how good it is for them, but it can, it, it's a decent living to, if you're an editor and you can do it, but they don't know how to connect with a lot of customers over here. Right. And so these guys saw an opportunity and said, Hey, 
we're going to be the middlemen so these guys can come to us and we're going to say this is the rate that you get it's not negotiable but we can give you consistent work take it or leave it and that's why you get really inconsistent results is because they are saying it'd be like if you were told by every agent hey it's a hundred bucks for a photo shoot take it or leave it you can have no work or you can get a hundred bucks for it well, at the end of the day, if you really want to do it, you're going to take it. And I know that that's like, wow, a hundred bucks. And then it's like, this is what it is over there for them. And I pay my editors, I think it's a dollar fifty per photo, maybe more dollar eighty five. I want to say it, it might be more, might be less. I can't remember, but like, I'm fine with paying more for it. As long as the editing is good and consistent and they take their time and they are well paid for it. That's fine with me because my clients don't care. I work with clients who will pay for quality and I will pay for quality and I hope that people understand that. And there, there is a time and a place for cheaper and quicker, but it's not always better. So that rant over with, let's get into it. So what I have here is an action that I have created. It's going to be my two image flambient. Make sure I have to have it deselected because that's how I do things. I did not build that into the action, but I'm gonna go ahead and play and it'll show you what it did. So in one mouse click, this went and relabeled all my images and made them a flash and an ambient. It then duplicated it, renamed one of them to Windows. It changed, because this is gonna be my window pull, it changed the layer blend mode to a darken. I have an ambient layer here set at a 50% opacity, opacity, whatever. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. We have our lumosity layer here at 100%, and we have our flash, okay? And it did all this stuff with one button click, which is why having actions is great. Uh, there is a little bit more we can do with this guy. I'm going to show you. We're going to duplicate him. We're going to turn the opacity up to 100% and we are going to mask it off. Now you can kind of see there what that did, right? You see how the color shifts a little bit? So this is going to be kind of a little bit of a hybrid. We've got issues. We have our windows are still a little bit too uh, white for me, a little too hazy. We've also got down here this line from the flash we've also got this line from the flash we've got the shadows from the flashes here this is the the things that come along with flambient now granted you could go to either side and pop it but then you're just competing with both of them and gradienting across and it, it you're never not going to have lines like this i do one pop from the back right behind my camera i have a diffuser on my 8400 pro this works the best for me. If the room is massive, I will give a couple extra pops in here and I'll walk around with it and do that. But largely, as long as it is this, this is how I go with it. I do one flash pop because it is the quickest. So we'll come in here. First thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna try and paint these lines out and get rid of some of these. You can see, right here's what I'm talking about. This guy right here. You can see the shadow here. You can see the shadow here. We get really weird color. So this is what that ambient layer is going to fix for us. So we'll start over here and we are going to make sure we are on white. We are on our brush, super soft. I'm at a 50% opacity and a 25% flow. That gives a really nice natural looking gradient and just kind of paint that guy out. You can make it just a little bigger, a couple passes and that's gone now. All right, let's come over here. A couple clicks, we're gonna go right here. You can see that's now gone and blended. A couple clicks here kind of painting it in and now that is gone and blended now if you did have an ambient layer that was a little bit off colored this is why ooh, also this is important to note we're going to get rid of this because i did this wrong so instead of control jang that when you have smart objects make sure you go in here and you do new smart object via copy because if you don't and you edit the one you copied it from, it will make the same changes on that layer. So that is my fault. So that is something to pay attention to because it is different if you are not using smart layers, um, which is why I do it all the time. So new smart object via copy that makes it its own independent smart object. We will then mask it and we will also change the opacity back to hundred. And we'll go and paint this all out again. Go here, paint that back out. But anyway, as I was saying, you could come in here if it was a little bit different colored, you could come in and you could open this up and because it's a raw file, you can come in here and, oh boy, I changed my resolution. <laughs> and you could adjust this. You could change everything about this however we wanted to change it um, and it would 
give us what we needed to. Now, granted, this was the TIFF, so it's not going to be crazy, but that would make it, that's how I like to do it. As I have heard in the comments, there are people who like to use adjustment layers, and that is absolutely fine. I learned photography when it was beat into me that you have to do everything a proper way, which is bullshit, but it's how my brain works. That's how I learn. So, oops. So I don't really use a lot of those new, the, the adjustment layer way because my brain does not work that way. It was not how I, how I was taught it. It's not how I learned it for years. Um, and you can use them. It is technically a sRGB copy of the raw data that you are editing. So it may not be a perfect gradient or it may not give the exact response that a raw file would. I think it largely does not matter. The only reason I do it the way I do is because I learned this way. So just know that you can do it with adjustment layers. I'm not gonna be showing it to you that way because I do not like using them. Um, and they're, they're, I use them in a certain way, but that's not how I use them. It's just not how I do it. So if you use it that way, go for it. But for me, that's not how it works. So we're just gonna paint those shadows back out, make sure we get a nice, good, nice blend. We're gonna come up here and get rid of this one. Now you'll notice this is giving us a color cast. It's just slightly different, right? It's kind of like, well, this is a little bit orangey yellow. We're gonna fix that in here and that looks other than this part here which we still need to paint out just get rid of that hard line that's kind of a a flambient tell we down here a little bit okay all right that's gone all right so we have that all taken care of we got all the flash down here taken care of i don't really see too many other flambient tells Maybe a little bit up here. We can get rid of that a little bit there. Again, we're getting picky, but that's what this is for. So, all right, so we've got that. Now we're gonna come into our window. I'm gonna click on this mask that it made, and I am going to, again, we are on a darkened mode on this guy. So if we turn this off, we can disable it. You can see it looks super flashy, but those windows come in really, really nice. So we're gonna re-enable that guy. And because this is a darkened layer, you can be a little bit more liberal with how you do this sometimes. And you'll see that it comes in very, very nice. That chair is gonna look a little goofy. We will go back and refine that here in a moment. But you can just paint with your brush over your windows. You can paint here too if you wanna kinda of get rid of some of that reflection a little bit. I don't go too crazy with it. Again, we're gonna come back and re-refine this right now. So we're gonna to switch to black. And I'm just gonna kinda of give a couple little clicks just to make sure that we hide that and blend it kind of naturally, just like that. Switch back to white, let's go over here. We can zoom in a little bit, you guys can see. And we're just gonna paint, and you'll see that it's gonna get a little bit goofy around that sink and around this guy here, but we will go fix that. Just paint it in, nice couple clicks, switch back to black. Let's go down here, brush this out. You can, if you want to, kind of come through here. I don't think anybody's really gonna notice. And you start to get those halos around stuff. So for me, I just kind of say, screw it. It's black anyway, we'll be all right. And we're so far out, it doesn't really matter. And right there, we've got it painted in. You can see what it did, brings it in. I think it looks nice and natural. That's me. If you like it to be a little more contrasty, you can go ahead and adjust it. You could add an adjustment layer if you wanted to. You might even be able to come in here and like kind of turn down, since this is a raw file, pull those highs a little bit more, bring it down just a bit. And you could also probably change the color to a daylight balance. And eh, it doesn't look that great. Warm it up slightly. Yeah, something like that and hit okay. You'll see it come in and we'll watch it change and it'll oop, in a second once that smart object works. And this is another reason people like adjustment layers is because using that sucks. I don't think this looks good. I think that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna go back, but just so you can see, that's what it does, right? It just changes everything. It just changes that, but um, eh, not for me. So now we need to come and fix these color casts. So you can either flatten all of these or you can do a alt control shift E and that will take everything that is visible, every layer that is visible and stamp it. You'll see it says stamp visible and it's gonna combine it into one layer and make a new one on top of all of them. That was on Windows, alt control shift E. Then I'm going to go and make control new, oopsie daisy. Control new, what in the world? There we go. 
Let's hold control and click it. Probably control alt new or control shift new. I never remember. Is it control shift new? It is control shift new. Too many key, key bindings. So we're going to make a new layer. We're going to come in here and we are going to change it to color. And that is going to change the blending mode to color. Now I'm going to grab my color picker, which is right here, or it's pressing I on the keyboard. Mine likes to fight me sometimes, so I like to go click it. And we wanna make these cabinets kind of in the same neutral color. So I like the colors here and over here. So I'm probably gonna go with like this right here. Then we're gonna hit B. So our active color is now what we are painting with. And we are still on that 50% uh, opacity and a 25% flow. And anywhere we have this color, we're gonna paint it out. Just really quick. And if it's too much, change your opacity down, change your flow down, make it nice and light. We just wanna paint that color over where that color cast is so that it blends it in real nice. And again, I'm kind of going a little bit overboard here, making sure we have a nice soft brush. And that's just gonna make those cabinets kind of blend a lot nice. And you see how we took that color cast out? Now you can go a little bit too far with this. So you gotta be a little careful sometimes because it will remove color if you put too much of it on there. Um, but what we're doing, this looks great. And then if you, you accidentally hit the light, you can go back and paint a little over it. You can add color, remove color, whatever you need. Um, and then we're going to go and fix this ceiling because as you can see, we've got a lot of orange color here, a little bit here. We've got a little green here. So we wanna pick a neutral spot. So right there is pretty good for me. Come in here and we're just gonna paint over that. That gets rid of that color cast, a little bit more here. Let's go back here, make it a little smaller paint over it and that is going to give us a nice uniform color again be very careful not to take too much of it out because it starts to look real fake and that took out all of our color casting there and we can turn it on and off and you can see that that really brings in a lot of that color back if we if we have that layer off and then it takes a lot of it out and that's really the best way to do that now again it is it can be a very heavy hammer if you are not careful with it. Um, you can also like say down here where it's a little bit, um, the color's a little flat. We can take this brown and we could just paint a little of it on there. And that just kind of brings a little of that color back into it. And you can see it makes that wood tone pop just a little bit more and it makes everything a lot nicer. And that is largely how I would edit this photo. I would then flatten it and save it and we'll do that. And we have a PSD, which is what I have them saved in. So one thing to note when you, if you are gonna do all of this stuff and you wanna develop this workflow, first off, it takes a lot of practice because if you're speeding through this stuff, uh, you do get a lot better and you'll figure out what actions you need. And again, we can talk about those actions, but you, um, when you save up here, this PSD, if you keep it in the TIFF, it takes longer to save. A Photoshop document that does, I believe does not have maximized compatibility on takes the least amount of time to save. This is some of the weird stuff I have found over the years because if you're working over a network drive, or because that's what I'm working on, I'm these are not saved on my computer, they're saved to my backup drive that is down in my basement. Uh, it's all wired and everything like that, but it's on my NAS. And you can see it's got my backup up there. It tells you where the file thing is. PSDs are the quickest savings, and I believe they don't have maximized compatibility checked on them. I, I don't, I'll have to check on that for you, but that's what I have learned is that a flattened PSD takes about five seconds to save over a network. A TIFF will take anywhere from, depending on the compression, can take anywhere from 30 seconds to 90 seconds to save, and the maximized compatibility checked PSDs can take quite a bit longer, I think. It's either one or the other on those, but this is the best. Photoshop document and you can come into Lightroom here and when you go to preferences and you have external editing make sure you have it file format PSD because if you have it in TIFF uh, okay so it is I do have maximized compatibility checked because here's where it says please be. I couldn't remember because there's one of them that makes it unusable <laughs> and you have to be careful so yeah you must have maximized compatibility checked in Photoshop but a PSD with maximized compatibility checked, flattened, is going to be the quickest way to save anything in Photoshop. Because otherwise, if you're saving it as a JPEG or you're saving it as a TIFF, it is going to take longer to write and do that. 
That is one thing I have found also that is really easy. And then from here, the last thing that I would do to this, because you can see if we go, that's that one, geez. Uh, the last thing I would do is maybe a transform, put that automatic transform on there. And that's pretty good, looks great. You can brighten it a little bit if you'd like to, you can darken it, whatever you want to do. But that is a very natural looking way to use a flambient blend uh, for your photography. Now again, we got lucky with this one, it was gray and white. Um, there was a lot of complicated windows on this guy, but as you can see, the blend looks really natural through all of this stuff. The blend looks super natural in the windows, which is what I am all about. Um, and like you can see here, we'll do a quick comparison. This is what we started with. Here's what we got out of it. And here is what we ended up with. So a nice neutral exposure with really good contrast and color. And this is a great image that I would be fine to deliver to somebody. I think it looks really good. Um, and that's how we do it in Flambient. And like I said, this is gonna be a continuing series. I will talk more or far less, uh, depending. I, like I said, I have worked in this for a very long time and there are so many different, there's so many different ways to edit things out there and I really don't like how many of the editors I see out there, the big names, the big people, they always find, and I get why, they always find the easiest images to edit, right? They'll say, oh, here's a rapid flambient and it's like a single pop in a powder room or it is like a really large room with not a lot of furniture with the sun in the correct spot. And, and like, I get it, that's great, but that's not how life works. You know, that's, I showed up to this one expecting to only be doing interiors. And when I got there, they had at the last minute decided that there was, because it had just snowed recently, that the snow had melted enough that they wanted to do interiors, exteriors, drone, drone video, interior video tour, and exterior twilights this day. Which is fine for me in my business because I, I only book one shoot a day and they pay for it they pay for that convenience but th this like <laughs> it didn't work out the, the perfect way and that is largely how a lot of this goes and so that's why i really like to do these and i'm going to keep showing you different ones we've got a lot more from this house that we can show you i've got a really dark bedroom that we're going to go over uh, we got a lot of stuff so we're going to keep going on this um, and I'll keep showing you different things. And then if you want to see how I how I got my editors, the best way to get them, how to evaluate them, whatever, we can talk about that as well. Because I think that's another hot topic in this. And again, I like to pay my editors. I like to pay for quality. Um, I don't like to cheap out on a lot of this stuff. But if it's something that that's what you're looking for, those options are available. So thank you guys for watching. Please keep commenting. Let me know what else you want to see, what you want to go over. We can go over actions and how to set those up. Some people love them. Some people hate them. They are quite complicated um, for some people. And But we can go over all of that. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys on the next one.